Hello everyone, my name is Alex Cameron. I'm a graphic designer, design writer and critic and a lecturer in graphic design and design history. Um, before I launch into the presentation proper, I wanted to give you all a chance to acclimatise to my accent. I'm told it can be, at times, quite impenetrable. Um, so I want to tell you a story to help you do that. Um, me and my family moved to Madrid a year and a half ago or so, um, and we had no Spanish. A rudimentary. Dothar vethers, por favor, and, and the likes. Um, but very quickly we realised that there were two um, reactions we would get to our uh, bad Spanish. One would be people would just speak as normal or even throw their hands up and walk away because they weren't able to communicate with us. The other were people who uh, warmed to it, took it on as a, a challenge um, and after a little while were able uh, to understand, uh, to get the basics, you know, uh, to be able to communicate on the most basic level. And I think it's important for this discussion, or the discussion of design and communications in general, um, that we realise that the, the, the audience for our work has to be receptive. Indeed, we have to meet them halfway. If we're to get the message across, if we're to engage uh, with that audience, then we need to understand them as much as they need to understand us. Anyway, we need to talk about the canon. Not just in this forum, but in as many forums and platforms as possible. Because I believe that the attack on the canon that we can identify today is crucial to be de uh, uh, that we defend it um, because it's not just the canon but the very concept of design and communication, our understanding, the public's understanding that is at stake. The critics at present come in kind of two forms. One, is, or, uh, one would be those who argue that the canon needs to be decolonised. The central proposition is that the canon um, is a representative document of white supremacy and that non-white voices have been excluded. The other, for now, I'll call social designers, see the canon as holding all that is bad about design and want to reinterpret how we judge design in terms of what's good and what's bad. I think both these propositions uh, have, a, have a lineage that I'll go on to discuss later. I think these views are problematic largely because they misunderstand what the canon is. And this is how I would try and explain it. The canon doesn't come about through democratic vote. It is not decided by individuals um, and arguably, it is only in part decided by the design profession. What I mean by that is, is that canonical works, movements or individuals are so because they've managed to break out of the design profession as such and have managed to influence other areas of life. So for example, business, culture more broadly, and the public, when they are touched by canonical works, react 
interact and engage with them to such an extent that be they become part of broader culture. To put it another way, canonical works transform through impact our profession, how we understand it, and how we practice it, they are often revolutionary in how they change how we design. So, of course it's important for the profession, but more so, it's important to recognise that business, wider culture, and the public are also transformed through canonical works. They both impart and receive um, and together um, the canonical work floats to the surface. So as I'm saying I don't believe canonical works are just plucked out of thin air. It's not a popularity contest um, and it's not just simply works that make, uh, are visible. Um, impact is crucial. Impact in the profession, how we practice and how we understand our world, but also the impact that they have outside of it. So for me, that understanding of the canon suggests very strongly that it's not a case of picking and choosing what should and shouldn't be canonical works, but accepting through observable reality and materiality that canonical works are not just our work, but the work of others. With this in mind, it's both unsurprising and surprising at the same time that the canon should be under attack. I mentioned um, people who want to decolonize the canon as much as people who want to um, reinterpret what good design means. To really get a handle on this moment, we have to understand, I believe, that this attack has been 50 years or so in the making. Uh, the design leadership, um, the design elite, have for a generation turn, been turning their backs on what I believe is fundamentally the role of design in society and want to reconfigure it in such a way as to rob it of what um, is at its heart, which is a universal impulse. I think one area of, um, um, a problematic area of the last 50 years is how many leading designers um, have turned against what was termed consumerism. The problem is the anti-consumerist rhetoric of the 70s and 80s very quickly became anti-consumer. So the historic dynamic role of design and the relationship, the tripartite relationship between designer, client and audience began to be dismantled. That dynamic relationship was reconfigured to such an extent that today, the designer, it is argued, is the arbiter of what should be um, and what is good and bad. The client, if they fall outside this ethical framework, is to be cast aside. More importantly, the audience is no longer seen as a participant in the design process, but is now seen as a static uh, object 
that is to be told how things are. So, the way I understand this is like this. Who decides whether design is good or bad, ultimately? I think it's the public. The public's engagement with designed objects or pieces of design communication is crucial not only in their success, but in identifying uh, the relationship and role of the designer in relation to its audience. If we cut out the audience and see them as just passive observers, then all we're left to do is to tell them how to live, rather than recognising that dynamic relationship has a positive impact on how we design. So, the attacks on the canon, I believe, are not of design, but come ideologically outside of it. I believe at its root, the problem of attacks on the canon are located in a rejection of the public and a rejection of the belief uh, in the public as active participants in the design uh, process. For me, the canon is for everybody. It's indisputable. I understand that some people who suggest they don't see themselves in the canon I understand that idea because nobody does see themselves in the canon. But we must situate ourselves in the canon. We must situate ourselves among the best in order that we can learn from it. No, the canon is not exclusionary. Indeed, arguably the canon is the best expression of the positive impact of universality. It is demanding of an ever greater and broader audience and demanding of an ever greater um, uh, engagement with that audience. The canon speaks of the best of us, our dynamism and impulse to understand and communicate, to understand the world and communicate with our peers. If we can sign the canon to the dustbin of history, we will do that at our peril. The last point I want to make is, as often as it often appears, that critics of the canon come across as radical outsiders or progressives. And I think this is to fundamentally misunderstand the location of the problem. Critics of the canon have bought into and promote an elite, an elitist ideology that says that the designer is God and that the public are there to be cajoled and uh, told what to do and what to think. So I think this is a very simple uh, collision between two fundamental ideas. One sees the public as part of the process, the other sees the public as to be um, um, uh, uh, told, talked to and cajoled. One is an active agent, the other is an empty vessel. Now I know this has been a broad sweep, um, which is only possible in 15 minutes. But I think if we were to boil it down to three points, it would be this for me. The canon is a necessary teaching tool for academics, students, practitioners, and the public more broadly. 
attacks on it are ideologically constructed outside of design. So finally, my argument, I guess, is this. For educators, our job is not to tell students the answer. We know this. Our role is to facilitate critical minds, independent minds, minds that will go out and understand and achieve through engaging with the public, not seeing themselves as godlike creatures. Thank you very much.